Another handy facility is something called Shadow Migration, where you can take an existing uh, local or remote file system, UFS, ZFS, or whatever, NFS mounted, if you like, uh, and you can migrate it to a ZFS dataset and be using that new ZFS dataset as though it was a complete file system while the migration is going on. Okay. You can only do a copy from a read-only file system. So if you look at the bottom here, you can see that you have to have uh, read the read-only property on a ZFS dataset. Uh, if it's a UFS local one, then remount it with the read-only option. If it's NFS, make sure it's shared read-only from the server. Secondly, you have to have an additional package installed, which might not have been there when you installed Solaris 11 in the first place. And you have to do a PKG install shadow migration. You can learn more about the packaging system and installing Solaris on the full five-day transition to Solaris 11 course that's available from skill builders. Okay, once that's installed, imagine that we have a remote machine that has a directory on it called uh, slash software. As it happens, I happen to have one here. The name of the machine is actually whale, so the command I'm going to use is slightly different. Okay, and I'm going to put it into my R, R pool because I, I have more space available in that particular Z pool. So I'm going to do ZFS create ZFS create minus O shadow equals nfs colon slash slash whale which is my server slash software space r pool slash software okay the prompt came straight back the migration is going on in the background I should be able to ls slash r pool slash software uh, and the actual source of slash software has got quite a bit of stuff contained within it various uh, course templates and Solaris distributions and so forth but I can access it as though it's already complete yeah. so you can use that data set and that directory quite happily as though the whole thing is there and in fact you can use shadow stat to watch the pro uh, progress of the migration okay it's complaining that I don't have uh, sh the shadow D daemon enabled so shadow D and let's try shadow stat this time Hopefully this will start outputting some data to me uh, fairly soon. There we go. The transfer is treated as a bit of a background process and the program does seem a little bit um, erratic. Yeah. You can see sometimes you're reported on the amount of space left and sometimes it doesn't. And here is an example. You, if I do a control C out of this uh, you can do df minus h and let's have a look for whale and there you can see the mount and when the migration is completed the file system will be unmounted okay. so we can leave that running hopefully it won't fill up my R pool before the end of the presentation okay. The last thing I want to show you is how you can actually split a Z pool. Now this can be done on any sort of mirrored pool. 
obviously you need a mirror so you can split a mirrored component but what you could do um, on a small scale server you could exa for example add an external disk dis drive and Z pool attach it to your root pool wait until the disk is resilvered and then split the pool and you've effectively got a backup and you can actually mount that pool you can import it uh, on another mount point on the same machine or indeed because it's an external removable drive you can take it somewhere else and mount it there so quite useful if you just do a z-pool split the last device that you added is the one that is split away but you can give the command line uh, another option which allows you to define the actual physical component you want to split Here's an example of a Z-pool that has got a two mirror component. Let's make one. Okay. Let's use Lake No Dedupe because there's not an awful lot of space actually occupied. Oh, why don't we use Lake Dedupe instead? So there I'm attaching a new component to the existing component C2 D3 S1 and that will now where it wasn't a mirror before it will now be a mirror through the wonders of the Z pool command which hopefully we can see There we go. The system's a bit tied up doing lots of disk work. Let's just have a look at Lake Dedupe, shall we? That's better. And it's already resilvered. Wasn't that amazing? So let's split it. There we split it. We still have our Lake Dedupe mounted. and there it's not a mirror anymore, we've removed one of the components okay. if we do a z-pool import we can see that the z-pool split has created a new pool which hasn't been imported by default so we can do z-pool import lake dedupe new and there it is on a completely different mount point and we can use it as a separate pool so that used the most recent disk I added to create the, the split pool I can actually specify if you look on the left hand side you can see I can actually specify the device name to split away and uh, you can also split and automatically mount 
by using the minus capital R and the directory name to automatically import and mount the split away pool. Now there are other features uh, with ZFS in Solaris 11 uh, including a new iSCSI server and client mechanism and also uh, you can now encrypt data sets as well so um, a lot of new features and well worth the switch to Solaris 11 okay. and uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope the features were uh, of interest to you thanks for attending and we hope to see you on the full transition to Solaris 11 course please feel free to contact Skill Builders uh, www dot skillbuilders dot com okay. skill builders have skills in uh, lots of different oracle areas including oracle database database administration database development database performance tuning uh, database stabilization projects and in addition skills with the Oracle servers, especially the new T-Series T4s.